reference to opiates and opioids. Okay, <clears throat> so um, obviously we've talked about all of these types of tolerance, chronic, metabolic, pharmacodynamic, behavioral, and cross tolerance. Here again, we're just simply applying um, those terms to opiates and opioids, okay? So in terms of chronic tolerance, within a matter of say three to four months, the user can um, increase up to tenfold how much drug they need to produce the desired effects. So over a relatively short period of time, there you've got 10 times the amount of drug that's necessary to produce the desired effects. And then of course, uh, you know, almost always when we talk about tolerance, metabolic tolerance is gonna be one of the types of tolerance that develops the increase in the production of enzymes. And so the body is able to break down the drugs a little bit faster. Um, one of the other things that happens with opiates, opioids, is uh, uh, pharmacodynamic tolerance, but a type of pharmacodynamic tolerance that's different than just metabolic. We have not spent a lot of time talking about changes um, in receptors, but with respect to uh, opiate and opioid addiction, uh, there can be changes in the number of um, mu opioid receptors that uh, that occurs. Um, so some of the um, receptors uh, disappear. They're taken um, up into the membrane by, by a process called endocytosis. Okay, and so this reduction in the number of um, enzymes, excuse me, not the enzymes, receptors, uh, leads to reduced uh, effects and therefore the need for more drug to produce desired effects. Uh, behavioral tolerance, um, you know, that's the individuals learning how to carry out their everyday functions um, without, uh, you know, without any significant problems. That doesn't mean that behavioral tolerance will remain the same because obviously once the use escalates to uh, a level where they're increasingly socially isolated and seeking the drug all the time, then of course, uh, you know, there are problems. Um, and then we have cross tolerance. Once an individual develops tolerance to one mu receptor agonist, then um, it's likely that tolerance is also developed to all other mu, um, mu receptor agonist. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about withdrawal. Um, so first we'll talk about the relative risk of death. Um, one of the misconceptions about withdrawal from opiates is that it's deadly. That is not the case, okay? When we are talking simply about the withdrawal symptoms associated with opiate use, Withdrawal is not fatal, okay? Now, you know, we can concede that there are some things that an individual would have to pay attention to that if not uh, corrected could lead to death, but the, the heroin, morphine, opiate withdrawal itself is not deadly. So for example, diarrhea, you know, that would only become uh, fatal if an individual, you know, we're in a situation where they, they don't ever replace the, the body fluids that are lost because of the, of the diarrhea, okay? But it's a huge misconception that a person dies from opiate uh, withdrawal, okay? So the uh, withdrawal symptoms can start anywhere from six to 12 hours after the last administration of the drug. They're generally gonna peak between 26 to 72 hours. And then um, most of the opiate withdrawal symptoms are over within a week, okay? And when we talk about the severity of the withdrawal symptoms, um, the severity is really gonna depend on the daily dose that the user um, is administering. Okay, and so obviously the, the larger the dose, uh, potentially the more severe the withdrawal symptoms. Okay, now we've got uh, quite a few withdrawal symptoms 
that are associated with discontinuation of opiates. Some of them are simply the opposite of some of the symptoms of use, but you get individuals who are restless, who are agitated. You may get individuals that are yawning. Um, you may get an individual that experiences chills that are interspersed with hot flashes. Um, they may have short, jerky breaths. Um, and let me go back to the chills for a second. The individual has the chills. Um, they may get the appearance of, of goosebumps on their skin. So it makes them look like a plucked turkey. And so this is where uh, terms like going cold turkey come from because the skin of the user going through withdrawal might look like that of a plucked turkey or plucked chicken. And so we get that term going cold, uh, going cold turkey. Okay. Um, so I think I mentioned the yawning. Um, you may get individuals that can that will sleep anywhere from uh, eight to twelve hours. Um, remember that when a user when, when an individual is using um, these drugs, then you get depression of the the vomiting center, you get constipation. So some of the withdrawal symptoms that we see are actually vomiting and diarrhea, okay? Um, you also will have uh, cramping in the stomach, the back, the legs. Um, and so the cramping in the legs is sometimes associated with involuntary uh, jerking of the leg. And so this is where terms like kicking the habit come from because you get this um, cramping in the leg and these involuntary uh responses okay and then of course one of the other symptoms uh, of withdrawal is uh, the profuse uh, sweating so the individual would actually sweat a lot and that that sweating is one of the symptoms that methadone does not seem to block I'm kind of jumping ahead because but I think I've mentioned in other places that we're going to talk about methadone as a um, treatment therapy okay and so those are some of the uh, the, the withdrawal symptoms that are associated with opiate, um, with, uh, you know, discontinuation of opiate use, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the treatments that are out there. Well, let me back up a second. I think I don't have it listed here on the slide, but let's just talk a little, a little bit um, before we move on to treatment um, about patterns of use um uh, so you know obviously you know we've 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 just before the the withdrawal slide talked about um how quickly tolerance can develop the chronic tolerance within three to four months needing 10 times the amount of drug to produce the uh, desired effects but here's the thing that not everyone that uses heroin goes on to become a heroin addict. You have some individuals who seem to be able to maintain a pattern of use that they use it every now and get every now and again. Um, and so our textbook refers to that pattern of use as an ice cream, um, you know, as an ice cream uh, habit. Okay, um, you know, our textbook also talks about you know the unpleasant effects that are experienced with the first administration um, of opiates of heroin and morphine other opiates um, and so you know we, we they talk about some users being able to just spontaneously discontinue use um, and they talk about others that may be mature out but you know, as they get older, um, you know, not, not as they get older necessarily, but as they continue use of the drug, um, you know, they, they eventually just phase the use out. But the longer they use the drug, the less likely you're going to see the, the maturing out. Okay. Um, patterns of use as well, those daily doses as time goes on are going to gradually um, increase um, and the interesting thing with the opiates and the opioids is that you can have um, sensitization associated with the use and sensitization of the 
uh, pleasant effects there associated with the use. And that's something that's a little bit different than some of the other drugs that we, um, that we um, talk about. Okay, so let's look at treatments uh, for opiate addiction. Okay, you have the British system. Okay, obviously that's only available in the UK or Great Britain. Okay, so that uh, is a situation where heroin is actually or can actually be prescribed. Okay, uh, and so the user would have to, uh, you know, get this prescription for heroin. That seems to cut down on crime that's associated with uh, the drug, procuring the drug, etc. Also seems to cut down on communicable diseases, um, you know, folks sharing needles and, and uh, you know, things like that. Um, so even though that's only available in Europe, um, uh, excuse me, Great Britain specifically, um, I'm not sure that it's that popular anymore, concerns about uh, you know, someone having a valid prescription, but then, you know, being able to give that drug to to someone else, okay? The predominant treatment here in the U.S. is methadone, methadone maintenance. Most individuals who take methadone uh, end up on it, most, not all, end up on it for quite some time. Remember, methadone uh, is a mixed agonist-antagonist it binds to the receptor site, uh, the mu receptor site, more strongly than morphine would. So it's able to displace morphine um, from that binding site. And it has a half-life of about, you know, about a day. Um, so, you know, if the user, uh, excuse me, if the individual uh, used uh, heroin, morphine during the time that the methadone is in the system, uh, then they would be less likely to experience uh euphoric effects okay now we said that the methadone is mixed agonist antagonist it still produces some effects of its own and so you have the risk of uh you know becoming addicted to the the methadone itself um there are other issues um you know we some individuals are able to phase out of the methadone use others use it more long term um and there are problems associated with that in terms of discrimination and in terms of of jobs and, and other things once people find out that an individual is on a, uh, a methadone maintenance. At the early parts of the chapter, we talked about LAAM, um, but uh, that tends not to be used because of the significant side effect issues. I believe there were cardiac arrhythmias, very serious cardiac implications that we talked about early on. Uh, buprenorphine is a mixed uh, agonist antagonist okay um, so again it's a drug that's going to bind more strongly to the mu opiate receptor be able to outcompete morphine um, for those binding sites but uh, you know this drug has some um, some effects of its own there okay and then in terms of antagonist th therapies um, uh, uh, let me go back. I'm sorry. Bupronorphine. Um, I think uh, we talk about it being a mixed agonist antagonist. So antagonist, again, it's able to outcompete morphine for those binding sites. But agonist, it produced some effects of its own. And so I think the risk here is uh, when individuals decide to grind this up and inject it rather than taking it orally increases the uh, risk potential and so I believe that what's done oftentimes is the buprenorphine is mixed with naloxone remember naloxone is what's used to treat the overdoses but in this case the naloxone because it's a pure antagonist um, if the individual were to to crush the buprenorphine and try to take it um, orally, uh, I mean, excuse me, and try to inject it, um, then in this case, the naloxone would be able to, to block, um, you know, block binding sites, okay? And then, of course, uh, naltrexone as an antagonist therapy, it's a complete antagonist, meaning that it simply binds to that mu opiate receptor, 
prevent anything else from binding there, but this does not produce an effect of its own, and so it does not have the abuse potential. Okay. Oh, I meant to, I'm sorry, I apologize. I meant to change the uh, order of this slide because it seems like we should talk about the harmful effects before we talk about um, some of the treatment, etc. Okay, but some of these will actually just be recaps of some things that we've mentioned a bit earlier in the chapter. We know that um, opiates can um, depress respiration. Um, we know it can produce those short, jerky breaths. Okay, we know that alcohol and the barbiturates also depress respiration. And so here, when we talk about combined effects, um, these could be very, very dangerous in terms of uh, potentially shutting down the respiratory centers, center of the brain. Okay, sudden loss of tolerance is an issue with the opiates. If an individual takes a drug, takes the drug in the same location, then the effects of the drug and the tolerance that develops becomes association, associated excuse me, with that location. So if the individual takes the drug in a new location, you could have a sudden loss of tolerance. Okay. In terms of the chronic effects of the opiates, uh, certainly not good news for the digestive system, that chronic um, discoordination of the digestive system. You've got increased risk of cancer, makes the uh, heroin, just like other drugs, that, a lot of other drugs at high doses interfere with the body's DNA repair mechanisms. Um, so, uh, you know, you've got that. But then if individuals are exposed to cancer causing agents, they're also at a greater risk. Okay. Um, effects associated with injections of the opiates, of course, increasing the risk of uh, contracting communicable diseases, HIV, AIDS, uh, hepatitis, other things from sharing, um, sharing needles using dull needles. Okay, and then implications for pregnancy. We've already talked a bit about the reduction in the levels of sex hormones. We've talked about reductions. Um, in the sex drive uh, itself and the fact that uh, prostitutes uh, used to use uh, the opiates as a means of birth control okay but there are some other implications um, with uh, the opiate use uh, as well so certainly bad news for um, you know, a developing fetus, you're going to get less blood flow, less oxygen, potentially getting to uh, getting to the fetus, and in the pregnant mother, uh, sometimes may suffer from anemia, cardiac problems, swelling, liver disease, high blood pressure, pneumonia, um, tuberculosis, and other things that she's more susceptible to. Um, as a result of her opiate use. Um, and then, of course, the babies that are born are more likely to be um, more likely to be low birth weight. Um, and then withdrawal is very unpleasant for um, the uh, for that newborn um, irritability. You got respiratory distress, the yawning, sneezing, tremors, um, and then those babies are going to have difficulty suckling or swallowing, and um, they, they tend to have a high-pitched cry, and sometimes they, um, sometimes they can even experience uh, seizures. So not good news for, um, you know, for a newborn born to a mother um, who's taking opiates opioids okay and that's it for that chapter